Oh, Alexander. What is this? It's my mother's luggage. They will be living with us from now on. What? What are you talking about? My mother and father are getting old, and I thought it would be better if we lived together. Why are you deciding things like that on your own? Besides, there's no vacant room. Then your mother can leave. What? What are you talking about? My name is Caroline, a 32-year-old office worker. I met my husband Alexander through work, and we got married after dating for a year. We are in our third year of marriage, but we still don't have any children. We live with my mother in my parents' house. We started living together after my father passed away a year ago. I am really grateful that my husband agreed to live with my mother, but there are still some things that I am dissatisfied with. First of all, my husband doesn't do any housework even though we both work. He is so lazy that my mother and I have to do most of the work. Hey, how many times do I have to tell you not to leave your clothes lying around? It's okay. If someone notices, they'll put it in the laundry basket. Then put it in the basket when you take it off. Why do I have to do that? Because we're all living together, and that kind of consideration is important. Isn't it better if we don't have to worry about each other? No, that's not what I mean. My husband always comes up with excuses like this and tries to argue with me even if he has to force myself to do so. And as expected, my husband doesn't cook either. He usually comes home earlier than I do and always leaves work on time. Nevertheless, he doesn't prepare anything, and when I come home, he asks me in a bad mood, I'm hungry. What's for dinner? Hey, can you help me with cooking a little? I'm busy with work too, and sometimes I come home late. No, I can't. I can't cook. Well, you can help me with cooking first. No, it'll just make things slower. My husband always comes up with excuses like this and never helps with housework. Well, it's true that I can do it faster alone, but I still want him to show a cooperative attitude. Even if he can't handle a knife, he can help by tearing vegetables. And it would be a great help if he could wash the dishes and cooking utensils that pile up during cooking. But my husband only complains and always lies down on the sofa, watching TV, reading comics, or playing with his smartphone. But I still love him because we fell in love and got married. Besides, I'm still grateful that he agreed to live with my mother just one year after we got married. Three years have passed since then, and the situation and environment have changed. My mother has been getting sick more often lately. That's why I drive her to the hospital every Saturday. Alexander, it's my mother's hospital tomorrow. I can't do it. What? I haven't said anything yet. You want me to drive her, right? I don't want to. No, I just wanted to ask you to take care of the housework while I'm gone. Oh, that. But I can't do that either. Why not? Do you have plans to go out? No, I have to read comics. I have to reread Batman Zero Year. You can do that after you do the housework. No, no. How much do you think there is? I have to make sure I don't miss anything, or my analysis will be flawed. My analysis about my husband might be flawed. He allowed my mother to live with us but it feels like he only allowed cohabitation. And in the midst of that, something unbelievable happened. It was one morning when I was making breakfast and my mother came in looking unwell. Hey, what's wrong, mom? You're sweating a lot. Are you feeling sick? No, it's just hot. What? You didn't turn on the air conditioner? It's hot today, you know? Yes. I didn't turn it on. Why not? Your room doesn't have good ventilation, and it's hard without the air conditioner. Well, that's because... Huh? That's when I heard the shocking truth from my mother. 
Alexander told me not to use the air conditioner to save on utility bills. What? Did Alexander really say that? I was angry and went straight to my husband's room. Hey, Alexander. What are you thinking? When I opened the door with a fierce look, my husband looked annoyed. It's too early in the morning to be like that. Did you really tell mom not to use the air conditioner? When I said that, my husband nodded with a look of what's wrong. Well, we're paying for the utilities, so it's natural to be careful not to use too much. Your mother is the one who stays at home the longest during the day. What if mom's condition gets worse? What are you talking about? She won't get sick just because we turned off the air conditioner. Heatstroke can be fatal for the elderly. And you told her not to use it. This room has the air conditioner on full blast right now. I'm the one who can use it. I'm paying for it. Besides, Caroline, who's more important to you, me, or your mother? What? You always ignore me and focus on my mother-in-law too much. What are you talking about? I was disappointed and speechless. I never thought my husband would say such childish things, like, what's more important to you, me, or your work? Anyway, I'll let my mother use the air conditioner or fan as she likes. What? Why? That's not fair. What's unfair about it? My mother is also giving us money from her pension for living expenses. It's okay to let her use the air conditioner freely. When I said that, my husband fell silent with an unsatisfied look on his face. Since then, our relationship has become a bit awkward. And in the midst of that, something even more surprising happened. That day, I was working as usual when my mother suddenly called me. It's rare for my mother to call me during work. I wondered if something had happened. My husband was on paid leave today, so I told my husband that if my mother felt unwell, I would take her to the hospital right away. I answered the phone immediately. What's wrong, mom? Well, something terrible happened in the house. Caroline, please help me. What? Calm down. What happened? Suddenly, a lot of boxes arrived, and Alexander brought his parents. What? What is that? I consulted with my boss and went home immediately. I took a taxi because every second counts. When I arrived at home, a moving truck was parked in front of the house. What's going on? When I entered the house, a large number of cardboard boxes were placed in the living room and my parents-in-law were flapping their hands and waved their hands in their faces. My mother was standing nearby with a troubled look on her face. Wow. It's really hot here. Isn't there an air conditioner in this room? Oh, there is. Use it as you like. I went straight to my husband. Wait. Alexander, what is this? Huh? Aren't you supposed to be at work today? My mother contacted me and I left early. What's with all these boxes? It's my mother's luggage. They will be living with us from now on. What? What are you talking about? My mother is getting old, and I thought it would be better if we lived together. Why are you deciding things like that on your own? Besides, there's no vacant room. Then your mother can leave. What? I don't know how many times I've told you, but what are you talking about? Well, your mother is quite old. Wouldn't it be better for her to live in a facility than in this house? I couldn't believe it. Was he always like this? Did he change his personality along the way? I thought he was a more decent and kind person when we were dating or just got married. But I keep getting betrayed one after another. That's unbelievable. How could you say that? Oh. You are noisy. Your mother should realize that it's annoying to stay here any longer. 
What? My in-laws seem to think it's their own home and are relaxing without listening to us. They took drinks out of the refrigerator without permission. Stop it. I won't allow you to live with your parents. No, my parents are a priority. Your mother should leave. You? Caroline, that's enough. But... Alexander, thank you for living with us for two years, even though you found it so annoying. Yeah, it was tough. I had to put up with it because we didn't have to pay rent. You? Caroline, it's okay. Alexander, you don't have to live with us anymore, so don't worry. Wow, that was quick. Then please leave quickly. No, you guys should leave. What? You and Caroline should discuss what to do from now on. Well, as a mother, I want Caroline to divorce as soon as possible. What are you talking about? This is our house, so your mother should leave. What? Are you serious? I've been saying that all along. You're always talking down to me. Well, of course. This is my mother's house. Huh? Isn't it your house? It's my mother's house. Even if it were my house, it wouldn't be your house. What? But isn't it shared property between us as a married couple? Maybe you should study again. You have no right to decide who lives in this house. That's... My husband was shocked and hung his head. My in-laws seemed to have been completely convinced by my husband's words that he was managing the house. Well, then you guys should leave. Send back these boxes, of course, with Alexander's money. If you stay here, I'll call the police. My mother said that quietly and calmly, and my husband was frightened and said, Uh... And we're getting a divorce. What? Divorce. Wait a minute. I can't wait anymore. How much have you disappointed me? I can't continue my married life with someone who treats my mother like a nuisance. You should pack your things and leave too. My husband started packing his things while being browbeaten by me with a terrible face. My in-laws seemed to be quite scared of my mother and me, so they quickly left the house and got into their car and drove away. My husband also got into his car and left in a hurry. My mother seemed to have let out a sigh of relief and collapsed on the spot. Are you okay, mom? I was scared. Don't push yourself, mom. I'm sorry. But you were so cool. Thank you. I'm sorry for causing trouble, Caroline. No, no, I'm the one who caused trouble. I'm amazed at how blind I was to my man's character. Well, I can't deny that. Hey, hey, mom. Give me some support here. <laughs> Afterwards, I strongly told my husband that if he didn't come to pick up the large amount of luggage, I would throw it away outside, and he came to pick it up. At that time, my husband lamented, we've already sold our parents' house, and we won't have a place to live at the end of this month. Please help me, but I ignored him and handed him the divorce papers without any discussion. Are you really going to divorce me? Of course. If you don't accept it, I'll fight you in court. My husband is weak to words like court or police because he's a coward, so he immediately signed the divorce papers. And so, we were able to get divorced safely. My ex-husband hastily rented an apartment and asked a moving company to move my ex-in-law's luggage there. However, a large amount of luggage arrived at the small apartment, and they are living in a cramped space. Moreover, my ex-in-law's house was too old to sell for much money, and my ex-in-laws have almost no money. Therefore, my ex-husband has to cover the living expenses of three adults with his salary, and their life is quite difficult. I received an email asking for reconciliation with that explanation, but I ignored it and blocked it. And just in case, I issued a restraining order against my ex-in-laws. Even if they suddenly attack me again, the police will come immediately. 
After that, my mother and I continue to live together peacefully. We can use the air conditioner as much as we want, and there is no big child who dirties the room more than necessary, so it's really peaceful. I'll focus on work while cherishing my time with my mother for a while. How was this story? Please subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video. Hey, how are you doing, old lady who lost one of your boobs? Hey! Don't say such things out loud in a place like this. Who cares? It is true anyway. Oh, yeah? Let me introduce you to my new wife. What the heck? You've already remarried? Yeah, unlike you, she is young, does have boobs and big tits. Hey, come over here. A month after my divorce, I had the misfortune to bump into my ex-husband at the station. My ex-husband, who simply dumped me after I lost one of my breasts due to breast cancer, apparently got married again. I'm happy to get remarried to this big tid woman. The moment I looked at his new wife next to him, I burst out laughing. Ah, I get it now. I laughed because I was pretty sure that they wouldn't get along. However, I want my ex-husband, who easily dumped me, to go through hell, so I'll prepare to add insult to injury. My name is Allison. I'm 40 years old and work part-time at a supermarket near my house. I used to work in an office, but I quit it when I got pregnant with my daughter Emily. My husband, Kevin works for an IT company. The current project is drawing to a close. I think I might be late coming home or unable to come home, so please take care of the house. He seems to be a leader of the project at work sometimes and is in a pretty good position. Therefore, his income is reasonably high, and we also have my income from my part-time job, so we don't have any trouble making ends meet. It's a blessing these days. Also, my daughter started junior high school this year. Since she is old enough to look after herself, I think I can relax a bit until she takes her high school exams. There are no major problems, which makes me sometimes get bored though, I like this life where peaceful days continue. However, I do have some minor complaints. My husband is a couch potato on his day off and spends the whole day on his smartphone. It's the opposite for us, he goes out on his own on his day off. Isn't it nice and easy if he isn't at home? Yes, but last week was my birthday and he went out alone as usual. I thought he'd come home with cakes, but he'd forgotten all about it. After 15 years of marriage, that's how it is. I guess that's how men are, it's like a waste of time expecting from them. My colleague, Mary, and I often complain about our husbands at work. However, these complaints about our husbands are really trivial, and I'm not seriously complaining. Complaining about our husbands is like a habit of the wives. For this reason, I don't hate my husband, and I rather think that we've been happily married. Uh. Allison, are you still here? My husband is coming to pick me up today. My daughter won't be back until evening, as she has club activities after school. So we are going for lunch. You complain about him, but you guys get on great together. Don't tease me. Aren't you going home yet, Mary? I'm waiting for my sister. We're going out together. While I'm having a chat with her, my husband came over. Sorry. Have you been waiting for a long time? No, I haven't. Oh, hi, Mary. Hi, Kevin. I heard you always go out alone. She was moaning about it. Allison, don't say such things outside. It's embarrassing. Then don't do embarrassing things at home. While the three of us were talking, Mary's sister came over next. Sorry, sis. Have you been waiting for a long time? No, not at all. Oh, hi, Allison. 
Hi, Lily. You always have a great figure. Not at all. Who is this gentleman? This is Allison's husband. Nice to meet you. I'm Lily. Nice to meet you too, Lily. I'm Allison's husband, Kevin. After chatting for five minutes-ish, my husband and I headed off to lunch. It's a really peaceful everyday scene of life everywhere. However, after this, this peaceful life that I liked so much was to crumble. One day, about three months later, I was complaining to a junior colleague at work as usual. My husband, he always goes out alone on his day off. I've heard that before. Have you? When he's at home, he's always playing with his smartphone and has become a little cold. That's the same as us, isn't it? Although it is a casual complaint, we have differences in our ways of complaining between her and me. This is because I have started to include my dissatisfaction with my husband in my complaints. However, he's always gone out alone, and it is not something that bothers me if he is at home playing with his smartphone. I didn't know what I was dissatisfied with my husband about, and I was feeling uneasy. Hey, Allison? Are you with me? Oh, sorry. So, what was that again? Oh, God. It's about my sister. Since I'd been feeling uneasy about my husband, I became lost in my own thoughts. However, no matter how much I think about it, I can't come to a conclusion, so I'm just daydreaming, which means I'm not actually thinking about anything. Mary warns me at work because I'm often in a daze, and at home, my daughter worries about me. Mom, what's wrong? Are you alright? You look pale. Ah. Uh, do I? When my daughter tells me that, I feel like I'm not feeling well. I wonder if this feeling of uneasiness is caused by poor health? I felt better when I blamed my feeling of uneasiness on my poor health. However, having accepted that I was unwell, I began to feel dull and sick. It's often said that all illness comes from the mind. However, I had been feeling unwell for a long time since then. It's been too long, no matter how bad it is. Is this really strange? I had been relieving my dissatisfaction by convincing myself that I was unwell. So I believe in the back of my mind that I am not really unwell. However, I have pits in my breast and liquid-like substances sometimes come out of my nipple. When I touch my breast, I also feel like there is something like a lump in my breast. I became anxious and talked to my husband. I feel like I have a lump in my breast. I've been feeling sick for a long time. Well, will you come to the hospital with me next time? Uh? You're doing well at work and at home, you don't look sick. If you're fine, go to the hospital on your own. You're not a kid. I am sure that my husband would have come with me to the hospital if he was what he used to be. However, my current unsympathetic husband won't come with me, apparently. I decided to go to the hospital alone, as I hadn't expected it in the first place anyway. The next day, I had an exam at the hospital and was told by the doctor that I had breast cancer. I had a vague feeling about it, but it was still a shock to hear the doctor confirm it. However, I was told that if I started treatment now, I would almost 100% survive, but when I heard about the treatment, I was shocked again. That evening, I told my husband and daughter that I had been diagnosed with breast cancer. Mom has breast cancer? Don't worry, she said I will be fine after the surgery. What's breast cancer surgery like? I heard they cut out breasts, and sometimes a part of the breast is cut out. In my case, my entire left breast needs to be cut out. That's terrible. Seeing my daughter's long face made my heart ache. Don't make that face. If I can still have my life, then losing one of my breasts doesn't mean anything. 
I tried to make her feel relieved with a smile and joking tone, but my voice was shaky and I might have also had a strained smile. So my heart ached again, wondering if I might have made her even more anxious. My daughter and I were filled with a negative atmosphere and stopped talking. However, there is a slightly different air around my husband. Cancer, huh? I wonder how much money it's going to cost for treatment. We'll have to do the housework ourselves while you're hospitalized. It's a hassle. My daughter and I were too surprised by my husband's words to say anything, and we both just looked at him. What the heck are you guys looking at? I'm just being realistic. From the gaze of my daughter and me, my husband realized that he said something he couldn't read between the lines, then he walked out of the room in the middle of conversation, as he was just not feeling it in there. A week after being diagnosed with cancer, I happened to be hospitalized for the surgery. My daughter said she wanted to help me to get ready for the hospitalization, but I would send her to school as it is a weekday today. Well, I'm off to work too. I wanted my husband to take time off work to come to the hospital with me if possible, but he was off to work as usual. I don't expect much from my husband in the first place, but his response still makes me sad. Two days after the hospitalization, I had surgery and lost one of my breasts. I sighed because I couldn't feel the swell of my breast. Some time after the surgery, my husband came to visit me. How are you feeling? Are you alright? I'm not feeling too bad. But I still feel a bit of pain from the surgery. I wasn't expecting a visit from my husband, so I was happy and felt a little better. However, my husband soon started to get me down. What does your breast look like? I shifted my clothes slightly to give him a glimpse of my breasts, which were wrapped around in bandages. Wow. It turned out like that. He gave me heart-rending words. I am still recovering from the shock and I wish he would choose his words carefully. However, he rubbed salt in the wound. When I look at those breasts, it's just like... Hell no. What are you talking about? It's about married life with you. I beg you, divorce me. What do you mean by divorce? It's so out of the blue. It isn't. I've been thinking about it for a long time, but when I saw your breast was gone, I made up my mind. I can't now see you as a woman, can I? You've become an old lady, over 40 years old. Also, you are still getting treatment for cancer, aren't you? Don't you think it's unreasonable that I also have to suffer, even though it's about your body? Which of us is being unreasonable? I forgot all about the sadness of losing my breast and almost hit the roof, but I couldn't shout at him as we were at the hospital. However, looking at my husband's face, I feel as if I am about to shout at him. I decided to convey only what I've come up with in a few words. Okay. Let's get divorced. You'll divorce me? Good. Then leave it to me and I'll prepare for it. Seeing my husband happy that I had mentioned that we were getting a divorce made my blood boil. It's not safe for me to look at my husband any longer. Get the hell out here. I wanna rest. Yeah, have a good rest. One week later. I was discharged from the hospital and left home as soon as I had packed my stuff. The process went smoothly and the divorce was finalized soon after I left the hospital. I have my daughter's custody and have become a single mother. I'm still living close to my previous house as I didn't want to transfer my daughter to another school. I have to be careful not to bump into my ex-husband. A month after the divorce, a chain of bad events continued to happen, such as illness and divorce, which made me feel depressed. However, I cannot stay depressed forever as I have to live with my daughter alone. I quit my part-time job to make ends meet and actively started a job search. However, my job hunting was ruined all of a sudden. When I went to the station to go to the company for a job interview, I had bad luck, I bumped into my husband. 
Hey, how are you doing, old lady who lost one boob? The powerful words, old lady who lost one boob drew people's attention on the station platform to me. Hey! Don't say such a thing so loudly in a place like this. Who cares? It's true anyway. He is still as blunt as he used to be. Oh yeah? Let me introduce you to my new wife. What the heck? You've already remarried? Yes, I have. Unlike you, she's young, does have boobs and big tits. Hey! Come over here. He again shouted loudly, without worrying about anyone else, and called over a woman who was checking the timetable at a distance. I can't see her face well from a distance, but she seems like someone I know somehow. In the short time before his new partner approached me, I realized what my uneasy feeling was. Perhaps the reason why he became unfriendly was because he was having an affair. Was the reason why he easily brought up divorce because he already had a new partner? I want to think that I didn't notice his affair not because I was insensitive, but because my illness made me less attentive. When his new partner came close, he proudly introduced her. I'm happy to remarry this girl with big tits. It's a bit awkward though, as she is a sister of someone you know. Are you are Allison, aren't you? Long time no see. What the heck? This is a girl. As soon as I saw his new wife standing next to him, I burst out laughing when I realized it was Lily. Oh, I get it now. They both start to panic because I suddenly start laughing and they think I'm going crazy. Hey, hey, what's going on all of a sudden? It's creepy. Everyone is watching. Please stop it. Sorry, it's just me. Yeah, I think you guys look good together. Well, the train's coming, so I'm off now. I wish you all the best. I got on the train that arrived while laughing. They looked confused when they saw me off from the platform as the two of them thought I would be frustrated or surprised. I laughed because I felt ridiculous that I didn't realize I was being cheated and I was also convinced that they wouldn't get along well. That evening, I phoned Mary, who was a junior colleague from the supermarket where I used to work and also Lily's big sister. I'm sorry I didn't tell you about Lily and Kevin. I believed that you must have had a tough time with your illness, divorce and new life, Allison. That's why I wasn't sure when to tell you. That's okay, I just thought I should phone you to let you know that I found out they got married. But I guess it was a bit of a surprise, as it happened all of a sudden. I was also surprised when Lily said she was going to marry Kevin right after you divorced. It seems like their relationship started before the divorce. Lily said it started a little before you were hospitalized. I guess she thought there was no need to hide it anymore. So she even sent me a photo of the two of them, lying on a bed with a smile on their face in a hot pillow joint. Until a while ago, it didn't bother me at all, but when I imagined that they were having fun while I was suffering from illness, it made my grip on the phone tighten. I wonder if they should go through hell and back. But I don't think I need to do something myself. What's Lily's personality like? Has it changed since you talked to me about it at work? No, it's still the same. Then it would be enough for me to just be ready to add insult to injury. Three months after I bumped into my ex at the station, I was able to get a job. Also, I'm getting used to my new living environment and I'm getting my peaceful life back. However, my ex threw a wrench in my peaceful life. Hello? Is this Allison? It's me. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Please, help me. You called me out of the blue, what is it? We're already divorced, remember? I know, but I need your help, actually. You're having trouble with Lily, aren't you? How did you know that? Did Mary tell you that? Yes, she did. 
I heard about her from Mary even before you had an affair. She told me that she would always play around and then dump her boyfriend soon after. What the heck? You've already known that for a while? Mary and I often complained to each other at our previous workplace. At that time, she talked a lot about her husband as well as Lily's bad behavior. Lily was beautiful and had a good figure, so she was popular. However, she was so popular that she caught quite a few rich men and made them spend money on her, such as buying brand name products or taking her on trips. On top of that, she usually has two or three boyfriends at the same time, and there were a lot of troubles. However, she is now in her late 20s and is no longer as energetic as when she was in her early 20s. Then she realized that it was time to quit playing around and was looking for a man who had a modest income and she could easily marry around her. That's how he fell for her. Why didn't you tell me that? She is the kind of person who plays with men and makes them pay for things. I talked about her with Mary at work. There's no way I can easily talk about someone else's business. Even to my husband. Besides, by the time I found out, you and her were already married. How on earth could I tell you that? Didn't you realize that before you got married? She mooched off sometimes, but it wasn't that bad. But after we got married, she suddenly became a big spender. She was going to give up playing around after marriage, but her character of making men spend a lot of money on her has cling to her and it has become uneasy for her to free herself out. Then she was driven by greed to start using their family money in the same way as she used to do with rich men, even though her husband only earns decent money. Her spending habits were insanely lavish, and he ended up losing all his money. Please. I'm already in a situation where I can't even make ends meet for the next month. Even so, she keeps on spending money. Why are you asking me for help? I think you should ask Mary for help don't you? I divorced you and married Lily. Mary got mad at us and cut us off. Besides, she also told her parents about the story of my divorce with you, and Lily ended up being cut off from her family. So no one can stop her uncontrollable spending. I don't think I can convince her though. You're close to Mary, aren't you? So can you ask her to talk to Lily? What an indirect way to deal with this. How could he possibly work as a project leader at an IT company doing things so inefficiently like this? If you're in so much trouble that you can't make a living, then I guess you only have the option to divorce. I've already broached the divorce but she talked back to me saying, the spending habits can't be a reason for the divorce. As expected, Lily, who led men by the nose, seems to know how to fight men or not let them go. Then I guess you will have to stay with her till she squeezes the last penny out of you and dumps you. Don't say that. If you help me, I'll marry you again. Are you kidding me? You're an old lady over 40 and you've lost your breast. How can you possibly get married again? So I will have you again. It's not a bad idea, is it? Can you and Mary talk to her to divorce? My ex dumped me so easily because he wanted a young girl with big boobs. What the heck is he talking about? But it means that he was driven to the corner and had no choice but to rely on me. It means it's worth adding insult to injury. I'm not gonna help you. Instead, you have to pay me for the consolation money for the affair. What the heck? We're already divorced. Now you are talking about the consolation money for the affair? You were having an affair before we got divorced, weren't you? I only found it out three months ago. If you find out within three years of being cheated on, you can claim the consolation money even after the divorce. I haven't had time to go through with it, as I've been busy going to see the doctor and finding a job. But now I'm about to start preparing my claim, so be prepared. There is no evidence to claim that though. Where's the proof that me and Lily were having an affair? 
Lily sent Mary some photos of you and her having fun at the hot pillow joint and even sent her a lot of messages that sounds like she admitted the affair. She did. She made the mistake of sending proof of an affair, which made her dig her own grave. Perhaps she would not normally make such a mistake, she wasn't on her guard, because she was trying to stop playing around. I am grateful to her, because without this mistake, it would have been difficult for me to add insult to injury. My ex, who found that it would be difficult to escape from my claim for consolation money, started to rely on emotional arguments. Are you even gonna squeeze every doll out of me as well as Lily? Don't you feel ashamed as a human being for doing that? You chose to marry Lily, and that's none of my business. Also, it is my right to claim consolation money. Now I won at the squabble. By rejecting the last-ditch effort, my ex was unable to come up with the next words. Is there anything more you want to say? Then I'll hang up now. Wait. Please. Help me. I hang up, ignoring his pleas for help. My uneasiness was gone and I felt refreshed as I was able to get back at him. Later, my ex and Lily divorced. It wasn't that I or Mary talked to her, nor did Lily accept a divorce from her husband. She tried to stop playing around and to be settled, but just couldn't do it. So when she squeezed all the money out of her husband, she simply divorced him. But only because I also charged her for the affair she did, she ended up fighting with him, so I think they divorced a bit earlier than they expected to. It has been a month since they divorced, and she already has another man. My ex suspected that she had been having an affair since before their divorce, but apparently the relationship started clearly after their divorce. She still plays her cards right when it comes to love, even though she is in her late twenties. But how long would she be able to make it work? Since she has been cut off from her family, I think she should not only rely on men, but also learn to live on her own. After Lily dumped him, my ex became completely single. All his savings had been spent and all that remained was the payment he owed on his credit card. A cap on his credit card limit is $20,000 and she used it to the limit. My ex, who has no money, has contacted the credit card company and asked them to wait for the repayment. He also has to remember the payment of the consolation money to me. He ended up losing both money and his family and all he has is the debts after divorce. I heard you cut ties with Lily, Mary. I'm sorry it has come to this. No, it can't be helped because she did something wrong. More than that, I'm sorry you had to go through all this. For some reason, Mary and I apologized to each other, even though it wasn't our fault. As Mary said it was their fault. Even though I quit the supermarket, I still maintain the friendship with her. Wow. Amazing. It looks exactly how it was. Not exactly. But you can't tell it all by looking at it, can you? I had breast reconstruction surgery done. Today's technology is advanced, my left breast is pretty close to its original shape. So I probably won't need to worry about my left breast. I'm now alone with my daughter and I'm used to my job, which brought me a peaceful life back. The greatest happiness for me is to live uneventfully and peacefully. How was it? I think a family or couple is meant to be something that encourages you when you're going through a hard time. Well, the ex-husband was a terrible guy, wasn't he? I think he hit rock bottom, and I hope the ex-husband and Lily get what they deserve. Thank you for listening. How is this story? Please also subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.